break it down for us a little bit. What's your when you're going out, you're trotting on the on the field for to approach your normal uh, any field goal during a game. What's your overall approach? What's going through your mind, uh, taking your steps, things like that? Can you break it down for us a little bit? Yeah, it's the kick. Yeah. I walk out there and try to do everything the same uh, when I when I approach the ball. Uh, it blows, and, and we know that we're gonna you know the clock's running. I just kind of try out there, you know, not not to uh, you know, get going too fast. I keep everything as, as, as possible, take my steps back, find the alignment of where uh, steps over. So then take kind of a gander of what, what, where I want to hit the ball, with a nod, and uh, just kind of let the ball take over from, from that aspect and get the head out of the game. I think sometimes we can overthink things and overkick and over. And that's just. Find that alignment that you that you feel comfortable with and um and trust it and go through it. Nice, nice. Tim Tim, you got some questions? I've got a million questions. I mean, first of all, David, you've got to have like some of the biggest guts. Uh I remember I was in high school when you had your I think it was your right leg injury and you still went through the game, uh doing kickoff um a couple of years ago when they brought in Todd France, an ASL guy. That's when I knew I was actually proud to be a kicker when someone who actually, I think it was a torn muscle you had in your leg and you still went out there and continued on. Um, for the most part, I continue to joke with people, kickers aren't real players until I saw that. And I'm like, all right, now I can say we're actual football players because I've seen that. But um, you, you did mention that you grew up as a U.K. fan. Just out of curiosity, what if Duke would have offered you a full ride? Uh, would personal allegiances uh, taken, taken into consideration? Would you have turned that down? Or would absolutely, you have, uh... absolutely not. No, 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 no. It, it all comes down to who. If I didn't have to uh, have my parents through uh, through college to pay for for school, that was uh, that's where my allegiance went. Yeah. You know, obviously, um, you know, getting the education and then having that taken care of financially was was number one, and getting the opportunity, to, you know, to go into the NFL was a blessing, and, and to be able to play. You know, 13 credited seasons, been around for 15 training camps, and playing in Europe. It, it, it was, it's been uh, surreal, but but that was the most important thing: getting my education, making sure that uh, you know, uh, if I had an opportunity to do it for free, I mean, you'd be an idiot not to do that. Right. Uh, agreed. Uh, that's a good message that you're putting out there. That's the one that we try and focus on. Is you know, um, get into college, use your use your skills, use your skill set to get you that education, and if you happen to go pro. That's amazing, but get that education because that's the most important thing out there right now, especially in this economy. Um, well, think about this. Yeah. Think about this. There's 32 kickers in the world, really, at, at this level. All right? Right. Now you have the UFL. you got some teams there. Sometimes that's there. you got the Arena League. You can do that. But to really make it in this – I mean, it, it is so tough to make it, and I've been able to do it for so long that you have to kind of sit back and like, you pinch yourself occasionally. You know what I mean? You're like, I can't believe I played this long and been able to do it. And I was able to make it because there are a lot of good guys. I mean, there are a lot of guys that come out and have strong legs, you know, and, uh, you know, everybody's like, well, I'm good enough, I'm good enough. But it takes the right time, the right opportunity, and you got to perform. So just to say, like, okay, I'm going to go to college because I'm going to be a, a pro kicker. I'm just, you know, I didn't think it was going to happen, and then it did happen, and now I've been able to do it for so long. It's like, just go get your school, get your education in, and, uh, and you know, if it works out, it works out for you. But uh, always have that education to fall back on, you know, especially for the high school kids. Because I, I feel like a lot of a lot of parents these days, you know, I think their kids are the next Tiger Woods or, you know, in this case, the next Morton Anderson, you know. So uh, stay right. stay strong in the school, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, agreed. Right. Uh, I think that's something we touched upon, John, John and I, in our discussions, we touched upon it a couple of times that it is such a limited amount of spaces that when you get that shot, you've got to shine. The perfect example of that, I mean, being San Diego natives, would be Nate Dating and Nick Novak. I mean, uh, opportunities came knocking for Novak, and so far he's perfect on the season with probably the best touchback we've seen since John Carney in his heyday. Um, that was great. The other question I have for you, um, since you've played in – what's considered too hostile environment. Mm. Overall environment wise, this includes like wind and temperature and all that. More difficult to kick in 
49ers stadium or uh, the Philly fans in that crazy weather in winter? Well, it's it's different. Um, the the weather conditions as far as the wind and uh, candlestick, it, it changes literally um, between the time I kick an extra point to the time I get back to uh, the kickoff. And it, it, and, and it truly happened even this week. And I had the wind in my back on a, on a extra point. I went to kick off and the wind was in my face. You know, so it, it, it switches back and forth in Philly. You, once you knew, like, you're going to have a horrible field late in the year, it was going to be windy, it was going to be cold, it was going to be – but you, it was pretty consistent generally. So here you don't have the extreme temperatures, but you have extreme changes in, in the wind. So, um, you know, the one thing that you know, I was just trying to find out from, like, Andy Lee, our punter, and, and Brian Jennings, our snapper, they said, look, don't try to figure it out, and then you'll figure it out. <laughs> if you try to figure it out, because you won't, you know. So just, you know, right. feel what you feel at that moment. You know, feel it and and, and kind of go through it, and um, and just trust your swing. That's basically all they've said, and you know, hopefully it'll continue to to, to be successful. David, what uh, what's your typical week like as far as practice, number of kicks, and things like that? I try not to kick more than about fifty balls a day. Um, so Wednesday, Thursday are my heavy days. I probably hit 20 balls um, on a typical Friday and nothing Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. I mean, excuse me, obviously Sunday I play, you know, but Saturday nothing for the game, Monday and Tuesday uh, complete rest. Mm-hmm. I think that's I think that's a big thing that, that kids are having. I think they overkick. And right. They think quantity is going to bring up quality. Now, you have to, you know, I, I do kick a lot. I'm going to kick a lot on Sunday, too, like keeping – Keeping strong, keeping loose on the sideline. I think a lot of guys just stand around and they lose that, that like a golfer, like that waggle. Just keep just that nice little shot in the net. Boom! All right, it feels good. And, you know, I walk on the field and let that muscle memory take right back over. Okay, All that's, right. that's perfect. That's something that we've been uh, really focusing on because, I mean, much like pitchers go through, I think it's something that's overlooked for kickers and even high school kickers is much like what pitchers go through in spring training for baseball. I think a lot of kickers yeah, exactly. start off the beginning yeah, of the year with a dead leg. Yeah, it's like a pitch count for a pitcher. You can't, can't, you know, can't, can't get it too high. All right. Now I, I've seen you, uh, David. Obviously, it seems like you keep yourself in pretty good shape. Um, you know, through the years, obviously been very known as a strong leg kicker. Kind of, as you mentioned, kind of broke in the league that way. Kickoff. What are you doing in the off season as far as strength and conditioning and stuff like that? What's your secret? I don't know if we have a secret, uh, uh, but the, <laughs> I do. I do get after it. Um, you know, I do a lot yeah. of, of still uh, Olympic type lifts. Uh, still uh-huh. squat, still clean, snatch. Um, you know, explosives training, six second bursts. I don't. I don't do anything that's that takes like I don't run anything like over a hundred yards. I mean, I, I'm six second bursts, like push and sled for six seconds, thirty, forty five seconds. Prep no work in 15 seconds, done. You know, and then off. You know, that's kind of that's kind of the deal as far as the explosion with the legs and you know upper body. I still get after that. You know, kind of pull ups. You know, benching and and um, uh, a lot of core work as far as uh, you know with bands and stuff. You know, so it's 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 pretty intense. Uh, the guy I trained with this last off season is named Steve Saunders. Same guy who works with the. Uh, James Harrison, you know, a lot, a lot of, a lot of big name guys training with this guy, and he works specifically with me on that. Um, a great, a great regimen for these guys uh, at home that, that that worked really well. It did for a couple of years, and it got me re- rejuvenated as far as uh, playing again as P90X. I think that's a great protein for these high school guys. Right, um, right. So it really works on explosion, a little plyometrics, and it doesn't go over the top as far as. Uh, too much pressure on their legs and knees, so uh, it's a safe way, I believe, to to. Uh, and I, I'm not like a big endorser on a lot of things, but that 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 works wonders for me. I dropped like 18, 20 to 20 pounds, and uh, went from about 15 percent body fat in, in a bod pod, which was probably about like 10 to 12 in a calipers, and uh, I went down to eight. So wow, that was huge. And um, you know, it was about four years ago I did that. It's still the same type of, of, of concept that I do now, but uh, I do it more with Olympic weights than uh, than just like dumbbells. I got you. So needless to say, you're pretty excited for P90X2 that's coming out, I guess, uh, this new year, I guess, like this January. 